Hey YouTube, it's Tara the Antenna Man here to explain once again another reason why some of you are having issues recently picking up some of your local TV stations due to the FCC repack. For those of you that have not seen my previous video, the FCC repack is moving a lot of the television stations to lower frequencies. And there was a deadline August 2nd, about a few weeks ago, when many TV stations had to move and some of them were operating at lower powered or temporary transmitter sites while they worked on their tower so why are some of you still having problems picking up TV stations since August 2nd has passed so that August 2nd deadline that I referred back to is the end of phase four of the FCC repack. And I noticed a lot of TV stations, especially in my area of the Northeast, were moving to different frequencies by August 2nd. Although the TV stations had to move to the new frequency by that date, many TV stations did not have the resources to complete all the work needed to move to the new frequency. It's not the matter of just taking the transmitter and changing it to channel 24 from channel 30. You have to usually replace the whole antenna and sometimes you have to buy a new transmitter. And there simply was not enough market resources to supply the demand of thousands of TV stations moving in a two to three year time frame. The resources I'm referring to has to do with the companies that make TV antennas that go up at the broadcast tower for the TV stations. Let's say that there's like three or four of them in the United States that manufacture these giant antennas that go on top of broadcast towers. And they maybe only get a few dozen calls a year from TV stations that are looking to upgrade the broadcast antenna up on the tower. All of a sudden, they're getting hundreds if not thousands of calls from TV stations across the country that say, hey, I need a new antenna. Oh, I need a new antenna. And what's going on is they can't keep up with the demand of TV stations that need a new broadcast TV antenna within a two to three year span. There are several TV stations that have been affected in my market because of this. Another limited resource that can't keep up with the demand of all the TV stations that have to move in such a small time frame is workers, the companies that supply the workers that go up on the broadcast tower and install the antenna. Most TV stations don't do this themselves. They contract out to companies that specialize in this because I don't think they want their chief engineer going up 500 feet and installing a giant antenna that has to be airlifted by a helicopter. They have to rely on a company that specializes in this. Fox 56 in my market was a victim of this. They tried their best to find a crew that could work on their tower so that they could move to their new frequency back on the August 2nd deadline that has come and gone. Well, supposedly they tried to hire a company based out of South America and the workers couldn't get visas to come to this country to work on the tower. So they weren't able to move to their new frequency on time and miss the August 2nd deadline and are supposed to move within the next few months on their new channel. So right now I'm going to list a few TV stations that I know of in the surrounding areas where I've installed antennas at. TV stations that aren't necessarily either on their new frequency, aren't at full power, or at a temporary transmitter site. The first station is WNEP Channel 16 out of Scranton, Wilkesbury. They were all set to move to their new frequency on RF Channel 16. They had the transmitter installed, they had the antenna installed, and they ran some tests a few weeks ago that I was happy to be a part of. I noticed that their new frequency had about a 10 to 15% signal gain compared to the old channel that they are currently on. However, their signal was so strong that they received some interference complaints from a certain public entity in New York City. So the FCC is investigating and they've been put on hold while the FCC investigates. Hopefully they will move to their new frequency in a few months. In Philadelphia, CBS3, CW57, and ION61 are still operating at auxiliary transmitters while they work on their main tower, again, likely due to the shortage of workers and shortage of antennas that can be produced for the hundreds, if not thousands, of TV stations that have to move from the FCC repack. In New York City, most of the TV stations that move to the World Trade Center are operating at reduced power because they just move there and are all at different frequencies. The company that deals with the combining of antennas has to fine tune it. It's supposed to be done by Labor Day weekend, so hopefully that will be resolved in the coming weeks. Although this explains the reception issues many of you are having, there is another reason why some of you may be having reception issues or lost some channels altogether, and it has to do with low-powered repeater stations that have been displaced when local TV stations move to another frequency. The best way to explain this is an example with an antenna I've set up in Hubbard, Ohio. 
I received a call from the guy that he could no longer receive WPXI Channel 11 out of Pittsburgh. And this was kind of a big deal for him. He was a nice man, but granted, he loved me TV, and that was their sub channel. He was a big Sven Gulli lover, just as I am myself. And I did some investigating on why he could no longer receive WPXI, despite them being at full power on their main channel. It turns out he was receiving WPXI from their low power translator station in Newcastle, broadcasting an RF Channel 33. The Boneheads at the FCC thought that it was a good idea to move WFMJ, the NBC affiliate in Youngstown, Ohio, also to RF Channel 33, essentially wiping out the slow power repeater station that WPXI operate at. The engineer at WPXI told me that they shut down the translator due to the move of WFMJ on the same frequency, and that they will be rebuilding the translator in the coming weeks on a new frequency. I'm sure there are some of you in this scenario where you think you're receiving the main TV station 50 or 60 miles away, but you're actually receiving a low power translator station that they operate just to improve reception in your area. And the FCC repack made a mistake and changed the frequency of a nearby TV station the same frequency the translator is on. So you have to wait until the TV station reactivates the translator on a new frequency. So I got into some very specific details on why some of you are still having reception issues when you may not have had reception issues on these specific TV stations. Most of you will not have these issues in the coming months once they complete their main tower. And if you're curious to hear if your local TV station is operating at a reduced power or temporary transmitter site, feel free to contact the station directly and ask them if they are at a temporary transmitter or reduced power. And also let them know that you are having issues receiving their station. They might have to do some fine tuning up at the antenna. If the TV station says that their work is complete and you're still having issues picking them up, you might need a better antenna setup. I know too many people that are using these models I tell people not to buy and they wonder why they have reception issues. These two models do not work that well, so if you have one of them, I highly recommend upgrading to a better antenna. If you have a local TV station that's still working on their tower and you can't get them in that well, please be patient and don't be rude to the staff at the TV station. The FCC really put a lot of them in a very bad position, requiring thousands of stations to move to new frequencies with not enough laborers or antenna manufacturers to keep up with the demand to get it all done in a specific time frame. In the meantime, subscribe to my channel for more cord cutting and antenna related information. Have an awesome day.